Hey, what's up everyone? We are going to start answering some questions, right? Got comments and questions about the latest video I did about the writer's block. So, we're gonna start. David Fuller. This is, uh, I didn't really, there's a whole bunch of comments and questions, right? And I haven't looked through all of them, but just one popped up, it was the latest one. And it was something, you know, like, that hit. It's kind of a big deal for me because I was in this position for so long. So, this question, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of summarize it. He's got an older boat. Uh, it's not as big, and he just wants to know, like, what my thoughts are on, like, getting in, I guess, more or less pro -ams with an older boat, right? He's worried that fishing out of an older boat, like, the co-anglers aren't going to like it, or they're going to be upset about it, and things like that, okay? Here's what I'll say about this. One, he, he makes, he, the, listen, new boat, old boat, does not matter. Okay, the boats, what I'll say is this, and so you're gonna to have to listen to everything I have to say about this, right? Just don't, just don't listen to this first comment and then go from there. You gotta to listen to it all. Boats matter. Boats make a difference. It is an advantage to have a nicer, newer boat. No doubt. I have tons of evidence for this, tons. My whole career, like half my career was based off the fact that I had an older boat than everyone else. And it hurt me. Me personally, it hurt. Did it hurt my co-anglers? Um, maybe at times, but I found over the years that co-anglers, right? It doesn't really matter whether I catch them or I don't catch them. Um, I've, I've been around, I've been around the game for a long time. I've had a lot of co-anglers travel with me. I've had other voters travel with me. I, I've seen it all. So I've seen guys draw what I would consider guys that don't catch them very well, and Coingers absolutely smash them with them. I've seen guys draw some of the best draws in the world that they think, like the guy is always catching them, but they don't catch them. Like a lot of times my Coingers don't do very good with me. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes I don't. It, it's really more based on how I'm fishing, not what I'm fishing out of for me for like you catching them behind me. So, that being said, don't worry if you have an older boat. Don't worry if you have a smaller boat. Don't worry about any things on whether or not you should enter a tournament, as far as the Collingler goes, right? Um, it, that has nothing to do with it, okay? Because I agree with him. He says he finishes in the top 10 a lot. Um, he catches them. So, that should, that should be good enough for him to be like, hey, you know what? those guys are getting the best chance possible. He didn't mention some other things, and those are the things I'm gonna talk about, is that me, personally, when I had an older boat, uh, I broke down a lot, a whole lot. Like, you have no idea how much I broke down. Um, I, I'll put it to you this way. If I didn't fish with fishing partners, like in team events, while I was fishing individual stuff back in the day, I would never have been here. Like, I would never make it efficient. There's no way. Because what happened was, is we were winning a ton of tournaments and making a lot of money in team stuff because I was fishing out of my, you know, well, at one time it was my buddy Eddie, one time it was my, me and Brent. Me and Brent, Brent Broussard, my fishing partner for all them years. And I still fished with them. We, we fished the choke king, like, we fished the whole Texas team trail. Um, not this past year, but the year before that. Uh, did good, made a top five angle of the year, made a top five in the championship. It's where I first started my that whole series on, um, I can't even think of it now, the series Deep Waters. So if you haven't checked that out, that's that's that was him. Um, he had a, he still kind of had an older boat, when I say older, but it was way newer than my boat. And um, his boat made it. His mo boat made it back to weighing all the time. My boat didn't. My boat, I. And, and here's why I can show you all. So I want to show you all this, this deal. This means a lot to me because it, it shows, it shows something. So here it is. This is when I just started fishing the Toyota series. Okay. I want to show you all what I wouldn't say my record was because it, this, the numbers show it, but no one really understands why. So here are the numbers. This is when I first started fishing. This is when I was fishing out of an older boat. 
okay? Uh, doesn't, doesn't look that good. My stats don't look that good. This year right here, see this year? I'm a circle. This year right here was the first year that I fished out of a brand new boat. And look at after this, right? You can see after having a brand new boat and being able to fish um, pro-ams, what it looked like. Like, they, like it, it was so drastic of a change. Now what happened was, is we ended up, me and Brent fished a, a team tournament. It was a, it was a two day event, one day on Rayburn, one day on Toledo, it was the championship. And uh, we ended up winning it. And then we ended up winning um, a brand new legend. I won a, we won a 21 foot legend and it had a 225 horse Mercury on it. I ended up upgrading it to a, a 250, uh, put power poles on it, did that whole deal, and, and that's the that's the boat I started fishing out of. And, and then once I had a new boat, I was able to then strike up a deal with Legend, and then the rest is history. I, I started being able to like once I had a new boat, I was able to kind of keep that going um, on and on. Now, it is a tough tough deal sometimes fishing out of an older boat. Uh, I qualified for the elites the first time out of an older boat. What most people don't know is the, the first tournament was on Toledo Bend. I couldn't go over 50 miles an hour. I never drove more than about five miles away from the, the boat ramp. Uh, I don't know if that helped me or hurt me. I finished third in the event in, in that first Bassmaster Open I ever finished. But um, yeah, it was, a, um, it was a sketchy deal. I was worried about getting back. The second one was out of Rayburn, came in fifth, didn't do that bad, uh, didn't have any problems, right? My boat made it through that one. It was also in September, it was dead calm, dead slick. And I, and I bring that up because I was able to move around and not worry about things. So I'll, I'll bring that point back up in a second. And then the third one, um, I was having issues again. And so I borrowed a buddy of mine, Eddie's boat. Uh, he, had a, he had a brand new, uh, a newer Triton. And I took that down to the Shafi Basin and that way, the basin was so big, I was really worried about locking and getting through like sometimes 45 minute hour long runs um, and, and it never failed on me and I qualified for the elites. But that's, that was the only year, like even the year that I qualified, like I still barred a boat and still had issues that looked down matter of fact. I have a, another guy I just saw in the comments had said, hey, uh, he brought up a bunch of stuff and there was way too much to go over in one video, but one of them was like, Hey, tell us about the big fish you lost in tournaments or breakdowns and stuff. And I mean, my breakdown history in tournaments is, it, it's a story upon, I mean, it's story after story after story. And, and uh, yeah, I'll, I, maybe my next video will be about that. But going back to the original point, I also lived on Rayburn, okay? And that was where Rayburn and then a little bit slash Toledo. We fished more Rayburn than anything. Having a having a smaller older boat on Rayburn took its toll, right? I mean, we just and back then we didn't trailer very much, and we when when it blew we had to go out there in it. So we just beat up our boat a lot back then, or it, it just also traveling around beats up your boat uh, on the road, your trailer, things like that. During that time, we were going to Texoma, Giant Lake gets really nasty. We were going to to Falcon, uh, that one tournament at Falcon, I mean, the, the leader, I think, busted off his whole trolling motor. I mean, there were boats damaged like crazy because of the wind. Uh, I remember on Texoma, I, I, after day one, like I would find fish and then all of a sudden it'd blow and I wasn't gonna risk getting there. I, I would've tore up my boat trying to get there. Same thing on Falcon, same thing on very many lakes, okay? so. We were fishing lakes like Falcon, Amstead, Texoma, Rayburn, Toledo. Uh, that's where we were going back then. Those are rough lakes when the wind blows, and it can damage an older boat, so and a smaller boat. So I, I'll say this: it hurt me having a smaller boat. It hurts other guys having a smaller boat in those events for an older boat, no doubt about it. That doesn't mean though that. I'm telling you not to do it. I say still do it because there's not all lakes are like that. Not all tournaments are like that. There's sometimes they have tournaments where wind's not going to get you that bad or like you're not beating up your boat. His comment acted like he wasn't really hurting his boat. Like he wasn't having issues with his boat, right? It wasn't messing up. 
So if that's not the case, by all means, get in it. Smaller boats are, or older boats are, don't ever let that be the reason why you don't get in an event, like in a program. And don't ever worry, there's a lot of calling nurses that listen to this, but don't ever worry about your calling nurse. The reason I say don't worry about your calling nurse is this. Um, good, bad draws, it's almost impossible to tell what a good draw is and a bad draw is. It really is. Okay. Like I said, I'm not always a great draw. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. You never really know. Sometimes a guy who doesn't know how to catch them but can get around them, it's better for you guys that are calling this, right? Like, if it was me, I'd much rather want a guy who doesn't really know how to catch them that well but can figure out how to find them, right? Sometimes it's easier to catch fish. I've seen some really good fishermen. I wouldn't want to fish behind those guys. Like, it, it's going to be a nightmare trying to catch a fish. He might be on them. But he just might not leave any to catch, right? So with that being said, don't ever let that be an issue. Like you go out there and do your thing. Um, all you need is a back deck to flip on. You don't need a giant back deck. You don't need anything. It doesn't matter if you're there first. Last. Like if you're doing good in the event, I always judge it this way, is that I can't, I can't worry about my calling learning. And I can't sit there and try to get them to catch fish, right? Like that's not... That's not necessarily my job. If I'm around him and I catch him, that means I did my job. And that means, hey, look, I caught him. I was around some. You know, it's their job to figure it out. And so that's how I look at it. It doesn't matter if you're in a small boat. Go out there. Do your job. If you're catching them, don't, you don't sweat getting in a tournament because of them. Right? Don't sweat because you have an older boat. Don't let any of that stuff bother you. I had only bothered me, like I said, because I was breaking down in my older boat. But it didn't, like, I still got in them. Like, it didn't matter to me. Like, the only times I felt bad is when I broke down and it did affect my calling nerve. Like, that's when it bothered me. That's when I, that's when I'm like, but it, but it wasn't stuff that I wasn't getting prepared for. Like, I was getting my boat fixed. I was getting things fixed, but it would still, like, it's just an older boat, man. So it would be something new every time. Uh, what would bother me as a co-angler is if you went out there and your boater kind of knew stuff was wrong and didn't get it fixed. Like didn't go through the extra effort of trying to get things fixed um, and prepare for that rather than just going, oh, I, I thought something was going wrong with it. You know, we were just going to chance it. No, that would that would upset me as a co-angler. Um, but yeah, man, don't don't let that. Don't let that smaller boat, that older boat, bother you in those programs, guys. Go out there. I, I did it for at least. See, I didn't win my first boat till I was thirty, or I didn't win that boat. I had won a boat before that, and we sold it. Um, but yeah, that was the first boat we won. It was. It kind of, it kind of was the right deal because sometimes you win boats that um, aren't aren't as big. Like right now, we just won that that uh, boat for the Texas Team Trail Championship that was an 18 and a half footer. Um, it's a brand new boat. I mean, it's got a 150 on it. Like, it's 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 great. It's all you need to go fish tournaments, right? But at the time, I was I was looking for something bigger. And so, I think the first boat we ever won was like a 19 foot fast cat, I believe. And um, man, I just kind of needed the money more than I needed the boat at the time. And so now, though, now I have, it, it worked out. Because we won that 21 foot legend, and I still needed to upgrade it a little bit for what I wanted to do. So, yeah, guys, don't let that bother y'all. Get out there in your boat. Go out there. Try it. No one's going to get upset, man. I promise. And if they do, that's on them, not your fault, man. All right. Good luck, man.